also have been asked in the comments to cover how to get all the endings ending a v and c i will be explaining here how to get each and every single one of these endings step by step of course i will try to keep spoilers away from this information since this is a critical thing to explain i will try my best not to spoiler as much and just explain the basics i will be using footage from my speedrun videos in case you're wondering why there's a counter on the left all right without further ado let me explain you how to get ending a v and c let's start with ending v which is the easiest one to explain v and c share the same route in a way for you to be able to meet the requirement as well as the same enemy that you had to fight at the end of the game now i will try my best when it comes to not pushing out spoilers as much as i can but i will be explaining to you which enemies you are going to be fighting and how to beat them as well because there's some people that have a hard time fighting ending a ending b and ending c so i will be explaining that again spoilers warning ahead be careful for ending b and c you're supposed to get to this place which is the tower once you've gained the three effigies you should be going through the church beating rancid and then you'll have access to the tower this tower only opens when every single contestant in the game has been killed either by your hands or by an enemy's hand or by themselves or maybe a cutscene killed them so long as they're dead this door will open you can check which character is still alive by going to sleep once you climb up you will be forced to get into a fight against Perkel. Perkel's fight is not that hard it's mostly about the follow-up fight that happens so long as you have any kind of status effect poison fire bleeding even pure raw damage at times you have an easy time against Perkel. the thing about this fight is that if you remove both limbs of Perkel, both arms he will begin casting black orb which can one shot you however the hand with the moon in his hand floating casts a meteorite that does 50 damage and the other one casts feathers which does very low damage however it applies bleeding this fight is supposed to be fought with an extra turn so make sure to have above 16 agility it will be enough for you to have an extra turn remember this fight has to be done alone however you can still bring zombies in this as well as black halo or even you can bring a salmon a blood golem for example this fight it's not that hard even if you don't have an extra turn you will still have a, an upper hand when it comes to damage per kill usually dies by poison fire or bleeding in the end you should always focus the torso or the head do not focus the other limbs because black orb will kill you black orb does a lot of damage to you when per kill blocks with his arm when he casts wingard you are not able to fight him with magic anymore every single attack that does magic against per kill when he has wingard will be reflected towards the player and will result in a one shot reflection does a lot of damage it's incredible the amount of damage you take when he reflects a magic attack be careful with this after this fight here's the real treat of why ending b is hard rare the moon the best way to take down this boss rare is to have heroin equipped have one agility boost from the hexen and one small things amulet that way you will have an extra turn over this moon this one is very 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 strong some people go for the eyes i will usually prefer to just go for the main body but it's up to you another thing about these fights is that you will have to have like a 34 a good version for rare and perkel is to have heroin on yourself apply it since it lasts for the whole two fights that you gotta do and you will need to have a small things amulet to allow you to give you an extra turn plus of course one point in hexen that gives you agility so you have an extra turn over both enemies since rare is slightly faster than the usual enemies in the game limb loss will also protect you from rare's attacks since they can sever your arms and if you're using a two-handed weapon your run will end there rare cannot bleed rare cannot be poisoned and rare cannot be set on fire so you are just focusing on pure damage in this fight another thing that you might need for this fight is either a hardened heart since rare only attacks once per turn so you will always be able to heal yourself each attack or you could also use battle stone battle stone gives you mind per turn and one of the gimmicks of this fight is that they steal your mind with each attack each turn that you're in this fight the eyes rare itself steals mind from you once you run out of mind you'll be forced into a coin toss if you fail this coin toss you will lose the game however with a battle stone you cancel the coin toss and you can still attack without caring about your mind Anything else that will heal you, like a Lich Monger or a Ring of Wraith, will also help you out a lot in this fight. So you don't have to worry about your HP, since in this fight, it's mostly about a timer of you fighting this enemy. The faster you take it down, the better it is for yourself. And that would be ending B. And there you go.
Now what happens with ending C and why do I say that it's the same as ending B? All right, so for ending C, you need to have everyone dead and then go to the tower before day three morning arrives. You are allowed to go to this ending in day two night and you still will be able to see this. The other thing that changes is that you will not have to fight rare. Rare is not in day two night. You only have to fight for kill and rare is not gonna be a threat. So it's only gonna be a one versus one instead of one versus two. Now, ending A is its own battle. Let me explain to you why. For ending a, you are supposed to activate three generators that are in three different places in the game. They're usually located in bunkers. So you should be fine. Either open the map and follow the X that will allow you to find these spots in the map. Or you can check it out here and I will explain to you where they are. So the first one is located in tunnel 7 over here, which is in the forest where you find Avela. You should follow this lady and the blue butterflies that she leaves behind. You will be able to activate this generator. The other place that you have to go will be in the forest over here by using a Venushka book in this shack. If you can't do this, you can always come from the west of Prehibo and then just go through the woods and go through this place that is hidden. Once you go through here, be careful and make sure to dodge the centaur that is protecting the area. Once you find the bunker, do the puzzle, evade everything as usual, you will find Osa here. Activate the generator and now only one more to go. The next generator is if you go through the source, either from here or any place that you can, you should be able to find the sewer puzzle. I made a video on how to solve this puzzle. If you are having trouble figuring it out, once you do it, you should be able to push this box away and go to the right. Once you descend this place, you you'll find a rat. Make sure to not follow the rat because they're not important for you to deal with for this ending at least. Once you reach the end, you will find a dog. You will have to defeat this dog to be able to proceed. Once you take out the dog, make sure that you go to the left here, go down this rope, go to the right, and here's the other generator. Now they have all generators, you should do the three effigies as usual and fight Rancid Surgeon. Once you go through all that, you'll find the tower. Ignore the tower, there's no need for that. And go to the museum. Once in the museum, make sure to do the puzzle of the museum. If you are having a hard time with it, I also made a video here in case you want to see it. Once you finish, go inside, activate the generator that connects every single one you press, and you should be logged in here for the rest of your playthrough. In here, we need one thing that is very important for this run. Two, actually. First of all, we have to fight three bosses at once. The first one being the Sylvian Trooper and the Platoon. The Sylvian Trooper and the Platoon are a very difficult boss that the Platoon will spam an attack that one-shots the hero, the main character. So you you should be either forced to kill it fast enough so that doesn't happen because you cannot guard the one shot. So the only thing you can do here is bring a hardened heart from the shop that will allow you to survive with one HP. Once you take down both of these, you will proceed ahead and you will have to fight Kaiser. He's not that strong. Just keep standing his arm with the sword and you should be fine. The last fight that you gotta be going through will require you to go through an endurance test of you against one of the strongest and tankiest enemies in the game. This thing is logic. You cannot do that much damage to logic. She does a lot of damage. So you should be preparing yourself for an endurance test more than anything. Logic has two phases. However, we don't have to talk about second phase because if you burn logic in either turn one or two, logic dies before reaching second phase. Every single time. You don't need anything else. You just need to survive this fight. Logic is, however, weak to magic. So if you have magic, make sure to do a lot of that against her and make sure to have a chak chak at least. Or La Dance Macabre. That helps a lot and that will be how to get ending A. It's the easiest one to get because you have to fight 30 things. One thing, you can just avoid it completely. The Syrian Trooper, you can just equip the heart and heart on the main character and you will be fine. For Kaiser, you can just stand the arm that has the sword and just go for the torso and that's it. And for Logic, just burn the Logic and guard the entire fight while healing yourself and you'll be fine. You can also attack if you want. That also makes the fight go faster. Another thing you can do against the Syrian Trooper is if you catch up to them before the platoon shows up by running, you can essentially skip the platoon completely but you need a lot of damage for this or a full team or a lucky critical or two so make sure to always be prepared to fight the platoon if needed all right that was the guide on how to get ending a b and c let me know what else you want me to cover in the future and i'll be sure to cover it here in this channel thank you so much for your time i hope you have a nice day and see you peace